The opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Cable 14, its sponsors or its shareholders, Kojiko Cable, Shaw Cable and Source Cable Limited. Welcome to The O Show. I'm Laura Babcock, and we're with Lauren Lieberman this week, of course. We'll say hi to Lauren in just a second, but first, here's what's coming up on the program. We're going to be talking about the casino, all the latest going on with that. Also, is there some relief when it comes to Randall Reef? And we're going to talk about a new controversial report from the school board. We'll get into all of that, plus a lot more, but first, let's say hi to Lauren. Lauren, how are you doing? Good. I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks. Well, you were here two weeks ago, but Dave has been subbing in for you. Yeah, I don't you've like been, that guy. You've been on a secret mission That's somewhere? True. Can That's you tell true. us? No. How about tell us about the wider mustache? Then? It's, uh, it's Movember, as we all know. I was at, uh, I had the good fortune of being at the Olivia Newton-John fundraiser for breast cancer last night. Yes, we all saw your Facebook post uh, on that. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> um, and, and I think it's important to know that prostate cancer is, you know, as, as pervasive to men as breast cancer is to women. And we grow stupid mustaches in support of uh, finding a cure. You do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a no-brainer to support the cause of men's health. Although I'm not a big fan, i got to tell you, of the whole Movember facial hair thing. Just 10 more days left. I know. I can't wait. I'm counting down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of updates to give you about what's been going on, some topics that we've been following over the last few weeks and months. And one of them, of course, is about the Thai Cats and what they were going to do with the games during the year that the wow. stadium, that famous stadium, is being turned and rebuilt. And... Uh, they are going to Guelph. Big news. What did you think of it, Lauren, when you heard? Um, well, if, if they can play at Guelph University, uh, it begs the question, why can't they play at Mac? But I don't, I don't much understand the answer. I'm not sure, though, that all the games are going to be at Guelph. Mm -hmm. they, the well, press conference made it sound like most. Possible that there are a yeah. couple of other locations that they're looking at. Well, but, I'm not going uh, to Saskatoon to I watch it. I saw a yeah. tweet come out from Scott Mitchell today saying how happy he was that they've sort of moved on from this subject. So I don't know. It sounds like it might just be all Guelph. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Uh, but there's an update on that for you. Lots been going on in town, Lauren, the last few weeks. But something that really caught my eye and made me very happy although it's a little controversial as well, was an article that was widely circulated throughout Hamilton that came from a Toronto newspaper. Let's get just the facts on this. Sure. Only the facts, Toronto Invasion. The Grid is a Toronto Weekly. The newspaper was launched on May 12, 2011, after owner Torstar stopped publication of its iWeekly. The grid strategy is to be a younger, hipper, more provocative version of Toronto life in a weekly guise. The article, Moving from Toronto to Hamilton, caused Hamilton to trend on Twitter. So I got this sent to me from various sources, people who picked up the paper in Toronto, people who saw it mm -hmm. online. I checked in with Tourism Hamilton and they'd seen it, of course. A number of Hamiltonians were cited in the article, as was Hyvex and all kinds of other things that are going on in town. I thought that the article, while well, some people on Twitter were saying there was a condescending tone, I thought it was more like grudging respect. But what I thought saved the article from just being a piece about the difference between Toronto and Hamilton was that it was quite extensive and they interviewed a lot of people who have moved from Toronto to Hamilton, set up cool businesses or just living here and working still in Toronto, loving the vibe, thinking that Hamilton is the place that they can be proud to live in now as though, you know, there's been a tipping point as Matthew Green said to me on Twitter, maybe we've tipped over, Hamilton is the place to be and people are just waking up to that. You what know, did you I, think? I, I feel very validated uh, in my existence in my own hometown now that Torontonians are are enjoying it as well. See, why do you have to take that attitude? No, you it's know good what? for no, us, for I, real I've, estate and for everything else. I found the article um, to be very condescending. We do not need just one kind of person to come here. And we have been, been saying for decades what a great place this is to invest. 
Whether that makes us a bedroom community or not is beside the point. But uh, for that article to be written for just the cool kids, how about employers? No, well, how first, about, like, first of all, no, the comment was you're talking about was it was actually Matthew Green who said tongue in cheek because I asked him about this on Twitter. Mm -hmm. He when he was being interviewed, he said, you know what, all the cool kids are here, and what he meant was we're already here, and it's kind of a, a, a tongue in cheek remark. But to your point about you know we've been promoting Hamilton for years, yes, but if you know Gladwell's Malcolm Gladwell's tipping point theory, it takes a whole bunch of small actions to finally get to a critical mass that tips the balance, I, I, and I think this is a tipping. Yeah, point. Yeah, but I think. I think, though, that the good news story is that people are investing in our in our city, mm -hmm. and it's a real estate story. I think that when you read this article and and how it's all spun to be about a certain class that's coming, I don't think that's an accurate reflection of Hamilton. Well, what I don't. It, no, what it is about is about the creator, and people can go to my Facebook page if they want. Uh, I'll friend you, and you can check out the link to this article, or you can go to the Grids website. Uh, what it, they're really saying is that. The creative class in Toronto that might not make can't afford game, to live yeah, there. Yeah, can't afford to live there, and there is a hip creative environment in Hamilton now that will suit their cultural needs. Hence the title of the segment, Toronto Invasion, as in the British Invasion. I it's gotcha. a cultural invasion. I got it. Right? But what they're saying is that Hamilton has a much more creative culture than Torontonians might be aware of. And they spoke to Torontonians who have moved here and who say, you know what, it's actually pretty great. So I don't know how people manage to find a negative spin on this. It's good news that we're being recognized for the great city that we are. We don't need Toronto to move here, but it doesn't hurt with housing values. And wait till go train services 24 hours or and, you know all day Wait and the moral that. of the story is invest in property now before uh, before we are just a full-on bedroom community that everyone is aware of but I don't I, I you know I reject that bedroom community concept because some of the people in the article were people who have moved here and set up shop in town mm -hmm. the article's not suggesting you simply use it for commuting to Hamilton it's suggesting that Hamilton is actually viable in its own okay, right but for, the for creative every class. person who moves from Toronto and sets up a shop on James Street North, I guarantee you there's a hundred who live on the mountain or in the burbs or somewhere else and commute and do something else that isn't quite as creative. We well, need jobs, we need tax base, we need sure. all kinds of things. So take it as an example. I have an office on King William, right. I work in Hamilton, my Great. husband commutes to Toronto every day and can't wait for the all So you're, you're a win-win, you're so, one of each. But this is what I'm suggesting to you, is Absolutely. I don't think it's just simply a bedroom community story. If it was that, it would have said, you know what, if you're finding Burlington and Oakville too expensive, hop down 20 more minutes to Hamilton. It's saying Hamilton has its own culture, which is, you know, um, where Toronto might have felt like it was, it was re referenced back in the 90s before a lot of changes to Toronto but it's saying that Hamilton has a culture in its own right which is an interesting culture which is a cool culture and just because we've known that I don't know how you think it's a negative that a, you know a kind of a, a hip magazine or whatever it wants to be in Toronto is recognizing that fact we should be proud of it uh, sure, you know, super but, crawl was part of the tipping point but, but translate it back to this if you are cool and creative but can't make a go of it in the big city come to Hamilton that's not that's not great. Or take oh, all that first stuff of that okay. statement away. So I'm an example maybe and maybe I need to say this that a lot of the my clients that pay my bills are in, in Toronto, sure. right? So I make the money that I make not necessarily all in this local economy because it is not, you know, I do PR and marketing and that's a bigger city kind of <laughs> field but it doesn't mean because people choose to have better quality of life that they're not successful in the creative arts or creative business in Toronto no, maybe they are that's, that's maybe they just written. I can't pay they, my rent there but so maybe they there. actually want to have a detached home and right. some space and you know a little bit of extra cash rather than living in a I, house for I a don't think we're bucks. arguing about anything I live here so but and, you're, and you're I choose to but you're choosing to look at this you know as soon as I put this out on Facebook mm -hmm. and I said be prepared to be happy Hamilton you know we're, we always talk about oh people don't know how cool we are well somebody just wrote about how cool we are and people still found a way to be negative why can't we just say yeah it's our century it's our time it's our decade Hamilton I, rocks it's nice to be recognized we don't need them but you know good on them for recognizing what we've got okay. why do we have to be negative about I'm this? I'm not negative all right whatever we'll see okay. I'm not. I just when I post something normally on Facebook I get a million comments I post something positive nothing okay well a couple but okay. <laughs> okay let's get into our next topic uh, this is something of course that's been going on for I don't know over a decade and that is the whole issue with Randall Reef uh, it is a toxic hotspot an embarrassment globally for our area mm -hmm. let's get only the facts on this Lauren certainly reef relief the province is topping up its contribution to 43.6 million for the 140 million dollar cleanup of Randall Reef 
The final piece of the funding puzzle needs to come from the federal government. Randall Reef is the biggest toxic coal tar deposit in Canada now that cleanup of Nova Scotia's Sydney tar ponds is underway. So now that they're getting that cleaned up out east, Mm -hmm. We are suddenly the worst spot the in worst. Canada. Yes. But what's exciting about this announcement, of course, and our viewers will remember, we talked about this a few months back, is that because of delays and in inflation, suddenly the original commitments from the city, neighboring municipalities, right. companies, the two levels of government above us, um, suddenly that wasn't going to be enough. So is it the case here now, Lauren, that because the province has said, okay, we're anting up to the level we need to be at now, that the federal government is just waiting for the province to make their announcement and this is a done deal? Because the mayor said he's celebrating. I mean, in the article, said he was going to go out and celebrate. That's, that's the way it reads. That's the way it seems, that the federal money is sitting there waiting for the province to up its commitment, except there was commitments before. So mm -hmm. uh, great that Mayor Bertina is celebrating. Let's make sure that uh, this actually gets done this time. Mm -hmm. I think it really, really destroys the message that Hamilton has been promoting for, you, for years now, that we are a beautiful city, mm -hmm. that we have all kinds of environmental, between our waterfalls and our trails and the rest of it. Oh, and by the way, the most toxic hotspot in the country. <laughs> uh, you can come visit that too. All the way from Toronto, move here. <laughs> um, I, we got to get rid of it. Right, we do, um, because uh, I have often cited that York University study done a number of years ago saying our waterfront's worth a billion dollars. If you look at the assessments, the, 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 mm -hmm. you know, the housing value assessments came in and there was a big jump along the waterfront properties. We clean up Randall Reef, our waterfront gets a new perception, the development comes to the waterfront, everything that's happening with people who are moving to Toronto, and by the way, because you're probably watching this, ignore my colleague, we welcome you. People from Toronto are yeah. born there. We welcome you to Hamilton. <laughs> we're a great city, and we're not going to treat you like we do at a Tie Cat Argos game. <laughs> we, we will work well with you. We won't pee on you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. we digress here. But cleaning up Randall Reef, I mean, it's all part of the same thing, right? I'm going to go back to the tipping point theory with Gladwell. We, we've tipped now. We're no longer sitting on the cusp or on the cusp of whatever. We're there. Uh, we're seeing it. We're seeing it in real estate values. We're seeing it in terms of people coming down the highway and realizing how great it is. We're seeing it with All Day Go and now with Randall Reef cleanup. So we can agree it's a good story, but a you're a little bit skeptical. You want to see it done. I, of course. it's It's been talked about for so long, and we do have a habit. So. I hope the mayor is right and it is time to celebrate now. Speaking of habit, I couldn't have thought mm. of a better segment transition to our next topic, which is about the casino. Uh, oh, once again, once again, I don't know if you were in town when all this happened, but you admitted to me you, you couldn't resist checking this all online. Um, so tell us only the facts on the latest. Sure. Rolling the dice, the OLG has extended the city's deadline to make a decision on a Hamilton casino to next February. Councillor Brad Clark has raised concerns about the city's lack of information and strategy on the casino issue. Now I've called this rolling the dice because are they, is OLG taking an unnecessary risk here? I mean, look how many times Pan Am had to extend the deadline for Hamilton, right? It seems like this, I don't know if they know that history, but this might happen more than once. But seriously, uh, there are two pieces of information in addition to the extension on that deadline that I have been able to uh, see or hear in the last week that I think are germane to this. One, Lauren, is that Brad Clark did the Bill Kelly show the other day when they announced this extension, and he's not on this casino subcommittee, although he wanted to be, but he brought up some ideas uh, that I thought were great and brought up also some concerns which I think were very valid. One of them was, how can we be in the position of doing these referenda if we don't actually know what the project's going to look like, the scope of it, you know, the effect it will mm -hmm. have on Hamilton, both in terms of what it will be and the revenue, sure. um, which I think is, is pretty valid, and I Absolutely. know that Council's rushing to get public input but you know we need to kind of rest these answers out of the OLG first and the second thing he brought up was you know why aren't the mayors of all of these cities that are in contention for these casinos getting together and as a group saying you want to put casinos in our cities then we're not going to get a measly five million dollars a year we're going to insist on 20 to 30 million dollars a year if you're going to make us take on these social situations you know we're going to insist that no extra ambulance time is paid for by the municipality that it's paid for by the casino we're going to insist on all of these other factors in other words why aren't they as mayors of these communities lobbying as a group Group and making a power play while they have the opportunity. That might make the situation more tenable. And the other piece of information, of course, is Graham Crawford wrote a compelling op-ed today about the addiction that Hamilton has on casino revenue.
revenue dollars. So, you know, two sides of the issue, both compelling arguments. What do you think? I think I've heard enough from Graham Crawford on this issue, number one. <laughs> Good luck um, with that. No, but like every week. <laughs> Come on, Graham. Give, give As me, opposed give to us spin. who get to speak no, every but, week about it, right? but, but please, at least we do mix it up. Um, <laughs> Brad Clark's point is, is not just valid, it's automatic. How can you ask somebody their opinion without giving anybody any background? But that's what the city's been doing. They've already done several phone and, surveys, And that's why, depending on the question and how it's asked, you're going to get completely polar opposite um, results from any any kind of poll but you're wait, doing. So, what, so I think we agree on that. We need more data to really do an effective Completely. survey. But what about Brad's point of why isn't the city, you know, why are they sending messages like, oh, that sounds like a good plan for that kind of revenue? Why aren't they getting together with other mayors and saying, listen, we've got one of these rare moments of leverage as a group, power because numbers. The, the other cities have hoard themselves out for too cheaply. Hamilton is only in a position to make a deal for Hamilton here. And we aren't going to, as a municipality, get an OLG standard deal. It is a customized Hamilton deal. But are we pushing for the kind of revenues that we're going to need and things like I don't those extra ambulances, I don't think we've heard about uh, what the split is going to be and, and how that's but all come to But economic development play. has come out and said that they, or Tim McCabe, I believe it was, said that they, you know they've been approached, they know some of these details mm -hmm. at a staff level, the OLG knows at another level. Yep. When is the council casino committee going to know these details so that they can bring it to the rest of us so we're not spinning our wheels in a philosophical argument without the hard facts? Because it, well, the actual answer here is the city needs to decide casino yes, casino no. And I don't mean you, the Hamiltonian, I mean city council. Right. You can't bring all the specifics to the table and to the public before you can even... No, the casino, the city doesn't have to say casino yes, casino no. They have to say interested in discussing casino right. yes, not interested in discussing okay. casino. Uh, That's a big difference. Yes. You know, I've always advocated that the city give the green flag to discuss the casino because I agree with Graham. We are addicted to those revenues from Flamborough Downs. We integrate it into our overall budget. We don't keep it separate. So it's not like we can live without yeah. that bonus account. It's part of what we do to operate. Um, so I'm always been for let's have a discussion about the casino. I'm just not a fan of a downtown casino if it's going to cause more ills for people in our community. I don't think it's a viable, put it, if you want to put it where other people are, put it on the mountain, keep it out in Flamborough. I'm not a huge fan of the downtown option. The thought though that we might be able to actually turn this into a very sweet deal for our community with some strategy and some hardball makes me feel a little bit better about it. But the other the other side of it for for the city of Hamilton at play here is the, is, um, the development um, the tax base, uh, separate from whatever we're getting from a casino, the employment. Right. There's a lot of things at play huge here. factors, Absolutely. and we need to know more about them before you we will. can do our referendum. You will. Suddenly, at least Hamilton Council has come, come mm -hmm. to the realization that the horse racing industry has actually become separated from the casino issue. <laughs> like, they've got that. Now, OLG made that really clear to everybody about six months ago, but Council got it now. It, it takes time. <laughs> all right, all right. I won't comment on their ability I, to grasp things quickly. I'll leave you to comment mm. on that. <laughs> Let's get to a quick thank you and then our final topic. I want to thank, of course, Pennington's for giving me wardrobe and uh, jewelry. We appreciate it. And Madison Avenue Salon and Spa, did they do your mustache for you, Lauren, or is that your own they, creation? They did not. My hair is abysmal today. Yeah, I don't so think I, they could live up to no. that. They don't do his hair. No, well, they, they will against it. Occasionally him. when they do, I'll give credit for his hair, but otherwise Fair I don't enough. want to hurt their, yep. their good brand reputation. Okay, so speaking of brand reputations, uh, the school board has had a couple of years of, I would say, poor transparency, mm -hmm. a lot of conflict between the board and itself, um, you know, a process around the school's uh, evaluation, auditing situation that didn't go very well. And now they've commissioned a report uh, that's making recommendations, which, well, let's have only the facts. Yeah. Failing public, Hamilton Wentworth District School Board hired a consultant to author a report on its procedures. Recommendations include halve, halving, having public delegate, halving public delegations, <laughs> two days' notice for delegations, and not giving reasons for refusing delegations. So let's just break that down. Uh, there are other things in the report, mm -hmm. of course, and they're trying to streamline the school processes, and no doubt about it, it needs to be looked at after the last couple of years. But if some of the recommendations are to cut down the time on delegations, um, not tell people why they can't make delegations, require that they register two days before, it sounds to me like it's impeding transparency as opposed to giving the public they more They should have say. just got more specific. The, the, it should be no delegations from Matt Jelly, 
No <laughs> broadcast from Joey Coleman. Um, let us go back to where we were five years ago when we were anonymous trustees right. that just existed under the radar and stop shining this light on us and all our buffoonery here. I know. Well, that would mean no O show because look how much well, time we've given them. For to. sure. And now, <laughs> I'm sure that, that has, those recommendations have an awful lot of merit mm -hmm. for the school board, not for its overseer, but, its boss being us. The but taxpayer. the other thing that you have to look at too is that when you're doing these kind of reports, you have to look at the context. And the context has been poor transparency, not just poor process. So if you're going to come up with better processes, they've got to have more transparency and the more you're not dealing with the brand management issue. Uh, unless you want Sorry. no transparency. Huh, exactly. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, I think both of us agree on this case that we hope the board rejects those particular recommendations because while they might be more efficient in terms of getting the agenda through, it's not really going to help with their brand and, issues. And if I can them. add, we hope that the public rejects these trustees two mm. years from now at election time. Well, there, there is a theory out there that, you know, trustees or, or any board is always a little bit aware of what the consultant's report has in it before it ever gets out publicly. So Precisely. I'm not saying that that's an endorsement Precisely. of those recommendations, but it looks like it might be a trial balloon being floated. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, we reject, we shoot down the balloon. Yep. Okay, let's not go there. And the op-ed and the spectator, I think, agrees with our position as well, Lauren. Uh, let's end on a happy note, shall we? The way to goes. Always. Go ahead. My way to go goes to the McMaster Marauders football team for its triumphant return to this Friday's Vanier Cup. Uh, we're going to make it two years in a row, and McMaster is letting Le Rouge Or know they are not the only dominant franchise in the CIS. Very nice. Thank you. Well done. Way to go to the McMaster Marching Band for its appearance in last weekend's, this past weekend's Toronto Santa Claus Parade. I did go to Toronto, brave the traffic and the hordes of people, like five people deep, the entire parade route. Um, but you know what? It was a great parade. And one of the highlights amongst all these marching bands, including from the U.S., was McMaster. I was proud to see mm -hmm. them out there. They did a good job. So way to go, guys good. and women. A way to go to my friend Tara Lightfoot and all of the other uh, winners and nominees from the Hamilton Music Awards. The event just continues to grow. It's a wonderful celebration of our music scene in town. So congratulations to all. Absolutely. And thanks for keeping us up to date on all the music stuff, Lauren. I appreciate that. My pleasure. Uh, way to go to all of those of you uh -huh. out there in the <laughs> Twitterverse and Facebook land who have been asking the question, how's the weather for the last 24 hours? You've been noticing this, Lauren, haven't you? I, I have. And you came to me today and said, Lord, you know what on earth is going on with how's the weather? You're always asking how's the weather and people are telling you. Mm -hmm. I think that your office needs some windows. <laughs> well, I happen to have massive windows on King William and an oh. old and industrial, so that's not the issue. Then I don't get it. Uh, the issue is that uh, people in Hamilton will find out what this is all about, I promise, within 48 hours. Really, it's important and you'll learn okay. all about it. But thank you to everyone out there who is uh, asking how's the weather and, you know, um, way to go. We appreciate it. So a couple of points of update that we want to leave you with before our tweet of the week is that there's a new Laircast that's posted at Laircast.com and it is a freewheeling chat with a local, he's from McMaster, he's a um, guru in politics and communication, appears on national panels, Alex Sevigny. It was a great chat, eh, Lauren? Great guy. He's a great guy, Absolutely. and he puts up with all of us in the lair, because yep. I think that was more an audience lair cast than a chat with our expert. Everybody weighed in, because we were talking about uh, the Justin Trudeau Ugh. potential leadership. You can Ugh. hear Lauren already. You can hear him on the lair cast, groaning on the lair cast mm -hmm. about it. And also, we talked about the legacy of Dalton McGinty, uh, and he is an expert, and he um, indulged us with all of our theories in the lair. So you can go to laircast.com, and you can listen to that that Laircast with Alex Sevigny, Dr. Sevigny from McMaster. We Thank appreciate you. it. Uh, let's leave you now with what I think is a hilarious tweet of the week. And I've got to read this one because people who are on Twitter might not know what hashtags are. Hashtags can either be they're the number sign. They can either be used to connect you to a conversation somewhere or they can be used for sarcasm. This is sarcasm. So let's have a look at our tweet of the week and see if we can keep my audio up so I can read it. It's from Turn, Lock and Key. Laura Babcock, idea for the O Show. One topic in depth. And then the sarcastic comment, would that make you strangle Lauren? I thought that was hilarious. Wow. It bumped another tweet of the week, so thank you for that. Uh, very funny. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe it just would. But that's why we do the Laircast, right? So we can strangle huh. each other uh, on, in depth. <laughs> thank you for watching the OSHA this week. We'll be back next week. And send those tweets and Facebook posts coming. Not really into that. What? Strangulation. Oh, no.
<laughs> Depends what you say to me. <laughs>